6 Sports presents the Dean Trailways 5th Quarter. some weeks in the high school football season where we don't have to think real no. hard to find our <laughs> big game on the Dean Trailways fifth quarter and this is one of those weeks as DeWitt take, was taking its high-powered offense on the road to Mason. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Ian Kress. And I'm Haley Schongart. Last year Mason had the upper hand, don't forget, not only putting a running clock on the Panthers but also ending their season too. These two teams sure do have some history, and even in the Bulldogs' house, the Panthers got nice and cozy real fast. Elliot Larner goes to the air and finds none other than his twin bro, <laughs> Abram Larner. The Panthers' dynamic duo wasted no time getting to it on the board, not even three minutes in. And there was plenty more where that came from. A solid four minutes after that, Larner hands it off to another one of DeWitt's offensive weapons. Trav Moore was no one Ooh. was bringing him down 57 yards to the house. And it's safe to say he was playing in his own version of Madden tonight. DeWitt took a 42 to 14 lead into the break and kept its foot on the gas. In the third quarter, Larner connects with Andrew Scorfar in the end zone. DeWitt wins 55 to 21, getting some sweet revenge after last year. I don't think there's words to describe it. Um, that's something we've been looking for since uh, December when we started lifting, so it feels really good. Last year was certainly a tough year for us. I mean, we've played very well against them over the years, and last year we did not, so we kind of got back to, I guess, what we expect to do. But they're a very good team. You know, they did some great things tonight, but we played very, very well, so I'm very proud of our kids. They are rolling two weeks mm -hmm. into the season already. Well, exactly five years ago today, the Okemos football program last won a game. On September 6, 2019, Okemos defeated Ann Arbor Skyline 42 to 10 that night. Since then, the Okemos has lost 41 straight games. But on the anniversary, no one in Okemos wants to celebrate. <laughs> the Wolves had a great opportunity to snap the streak tonight. Okemos hosted Clio, a team they lost to by a single touchdown last season. And check out the student section supporting the Wolves tonight who were up 28-0 at halftime, meaning Okemos could feel that first victory coming. And when your opponent has a goose egg on the scoreboard, typically means the defense is playing well. It was the case for Okemos as Charlie Felino comes up with the interception. Then later in the third quarter, Okemos would have the ball on offense. And this play didn't result in a touchdown, but it was still a sweet run in my eyes by Ethan Della Faust. He wears number 20 and looked like a little mini Barry Sanders <laughs> with this type of run. Then in the fourth quarter, Okemos will seal the deal as junior running back Marshawn Hollums gets to the house with ease. Hop, skip, and a do. Okemos does it. The Wolves take down Clio 35 0 to end the 41 game losing streak. Head coach F.A. Scott Amakpour gets the water bath and the students run. Rush the field to celebrate. It means everything. Um, nobody knows how hard we work day in and day out. Nobody sees all the long nights, um, the long phone calls, trying to get the kids ready, trying to figure out how to put guys in positions to be successful. I mean, it's been a long time coming. They've done a wonderful job, a hard work. We coach hard, we push them hard, and they responded. And so it's, it's hats off to them and the things they do. Um, just great kids and hope, hopefully we can continue the trend and, and get back to work and, and enjoy this moment. What a win for them. Staying in the CAAC Blue, East Lansing was on the road tonight taking on Hudsonville. Late in the first quarter, Hudsonville QB Griffin Baker gets stumped at the line but spins free and gets in to help the Eagles lead 7-0 at the half. Then in the third, Baker hands it off to Carson Dystra, who finds the paint to help Hudsonville lead 14 zip after three. But that's when EL made things very interesting. Ben Fletcher rolls white right and floats one into the back of the end zone. It finds the hands of Daryl Jeter and the Trojans pull with an eight. 
Then, after recovering an onside kick, Jace Clarizio breaks out the speed. The Michigan State commit absolutely takes off a 50-yard touchdown run, people. And we got a two-point ball game. So, East Lansing decides to go for the tie, but Alex White is pulled down at the two-yard line. Hudsonville wins 14-12 the final. Grand Ledge was also on the road tonight for a non-conference matchup as they were taking on Battle Creek Lakeview. And the Comets were playing with their hair on fire tonight, up 33-7 at halftime. Sophomore running back Anthony Baker is going to take it to the crib. And the fun wasn't done there for GL as Cooper Parks is going to park his feet in the end zone for six more Comet points. Grand Ledge wins big 47-20 and will now get ready for a game next week. Wait for it at East Lansing. Ooh, yeah, that'll that is be, gonna be a really, one. really good one. Yeah, so great way for Grand Ledge to build off their week one comeback win over West Ottawa. As for another team looking to carry momentum forward from a week one win, the Jackson Vikings were back home for a showdown with Waverly. Our Tyler Driesinga was at the game for us and joins us now. Hey, Tyler. Hey guys, the Jackson Vikings hung on for a 32 to 27 win over Monroe in week one. Tonight they played their first home game against Waverly. A clash between Vikings and Warriors, Jackson defeated Waverly 33 to 13 a season ago. Jackson led 14 to 6 at the half tonight, but really pulled away in the third. About two minutes left in the quarter, Jackson's Bryce Nastali picks off the short pass over the middle, gets to the sideline and outraces everybody down the field. A pick six for the Vikings put them up 32 to six. Fourth quarter now, Waverly responds. Dominic Stone plants and fires, hitting Cedric Jackson for the touchdown to cut into the lead. But the Vikings were just too much in the second half. Later in the fourth, Kenyon Dunklin cuts up field and gets to Pater to cap off the Viking victory. Jackson moves to 2-0 with a 41-12 win over Waverly. Time for us to take our first break. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be Tyler. We weren't ready, That's but okay. hey, it's all right. Lansing Sexton defeated Lansing Catholic for the first time ever last season. We'll see if they can make it back-to-back -back <laughs> wins over the Cougars this year. We'll have those highlights after the break. And that was one of three seedable AC White matchups on the docket tonight. We'll also have highlights from Olivet Portland and Lakewood versus Charlotte. It's all next after the break. Got a Look for the U.S. Army Fan Zone each week at the Six Sports Game of the Week. Try your skill at games, win great prizes, and more. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. I'm Curtis Hertel, and I approve this message. What's as dangerous as pharmaceutical companies that sell us defective drugs? A politician who lets them off the hook. Tom Barrett voted for a law that gives drug companies near absolute immunity. A law that existed only in Michigan. So when their drugs harmed or killed people, we were the only ones in the nation who couldn't fight back. No wonder Big Pharma allies spent over $4 million to elect Barrett. This is more than politics. Tom Barrett is dangerous. Skill is a game changer. And when the doctors you know and trust team up with one of the nation's top health systems, the possibilities are endless. Sparrow is now University of Michigan Health Sparrow. So together, we can bring more specialized expertise, more of the latest treatments, and more of the best possible care closer to you. Together, more is possible at University of Michigan Health Sparrow. As a diabetic, the drug companies have made millions off people like me. So when I heard Mike Rogers called himself the champion of the drug industry in Congress, I was shocked. Rogers voted to give drug makers immunity when their drugs hurt people. He even voted against allowing Medicare to negotiate for lower drug prices. And what was Rogers' reward? A million dollars in donations. The drug companies don't need another champion. We do. I'm Melissa Slotkin, and I approve this message. Allie S. asks, how many devices can my Wi-Fi handle? That's an easy one, Allie. The average home has more devices than ever. But our gateways are engineered to handle hundreds. So not only will they work today, they'll also work tomorrow. That's our new intern. 
Thanks, buddy. Oh, okay, yeah. Just power all your devices with fast, reliable Xfinity internet for just $30 a month for 12 months. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Kamala Harris cast the tie-breaking vote that created America's inflation. The vice president votes in the affirmative and the bill is passed. Economists said Harris's vote led directly to the higher prices we pay. 22% more for groceries, 50% more for gas. Mortgage costs nearly double. Thanks a lot, Kamala. Trump had our economy humming. He'll do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. Prior to last season, Lansing Catholic was 4-0 all-time against Lansing Sexton and had outscored the J-Dubs by a combined 116-27. to So you can understand why it was quite a statement early last fall when the J-Dubs came out and toppled the Cougars 48-20. to Tonight, the J-Dubs looked to make it two years in a row while the Cougars were hoping to build off a Week 1 win over Williamston. Sexton taking the field at home for the first time this season after a road loss to Everett last week. First drive, Jeff Hudson turns a fumbled snap into a big play, stiff-arming a would-be tackler on his way to a big first down run. That drive would stall, but the J-Dub defense came to play tonight. On Lansing Catholic's first drive, a pack of J-Dub defenders swarmed together for the sack to force fourth down. Sexton gets the ball down to the one-yard line on the next drive, but then fumbles the snap. A mad scramble for it at the bottom of the pile in Lansing Catholic's Benjamin Seleski comes up with it, a huge goal line stop. But then on fourth and short, the Cougars try a fake punt, and the J-Dubs stuff the play. So a defensive battle tonight, and Sexton does it again. The J-Dubs defeat Lansing Catholic for a second straight year, 13-9, the final. Elsewhere in the CAAC White, Portland hosting Olivet for its league opener. We pick up the action in the fourth. Raiders on top 12-6, Dominic Navarra. Pitches it to Caden Dickerson. He rumbles up the field for a first down into the red zone. But later in the drive, the Raiders fumble, and Olivet's Ty Everett pounces on it. A big turnover for the Eagles to keep it a one-possession game. Later in the quarter, a little misdirection on the handoff for Portland. Fools our cameraman, and we catch up with running back Keaton McGregor racing toward Paydirt. McGregor had 95 rushing yards and a pair of touchdowns tonight as Portland pulls away for a 26-6 win over Olivet. As for another CAAC White matchup, Charlotte was taking on Lakewood. First drive of the game, Charlotte was facing fourth and short, and Braylon Holmes is going to be there to pick it up for the Orioles to keep the drive alive, which would allow Christian Bowers to connect with Caden Holmes in the back of the end zone. Check this catch out with the toe tap and everything. And the offense wasn't the only thing rolling tonight for Charlotte as the special teams was special tonight. The block punt results in Carter Moore falling on the ball for another Orioles touchdown. Charlotte goes on to beat Lakewood 35 to zip. Well, over in Williamston, the Hornets were hosting the Hess Hastings Saxtons for the first ever meeting between the two programs. The Hornets have made the playoffs eight years in a row, while the Saxons have made it four years in a <laughs> row. So these two teams are used to winning in the regular season. Yes, they sure are. The Hornets were wearing their custom gray jerseys with Be Nice on the back to help raise awareness and help remove the stigma regarding mental health. Williamston would score first, but Hastings was quick to answer as Tyler Frazier takes it outside and not only gets to the corner, but he gets a path to the end zone that he needed to put the Saxons on the board. Now, despite the early touchdowns, this was a defensive battle. Hastings going forward on fourth down, and Thomas Pratt says, give me that. The junior comes up with the interception and makes a bid for a pick six, but gets caught from behind, which is A-OK, -okay because fellow junior Joe Smith would finish the job for the Hornets. He's going to power his way in for a touchdown. However, this would be the final time Williamston scored tonight as Hastings goes on to beat the Hornets 16-12. to Well, it's time for our final break of the night, and on the other side, it's an early CMAC clash between Potterville and Dansville. The Vikings and the Aggies were both looking to get into the win column for the first time this year. We'll have the highlights after the break. The Dean Trailways fifth quarter is sponsored by Dean Trailways of Michigan. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. 
Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. News Nation Tuesday. A single debate upended the election. Who will come out ahead this time? Vice President Kamala Harris, former President Donald Trump, in their first and only scheduled debate. News Nation's live coverage starts at 7, 6 central, followed by the ABC presidential debate simulcast on News Nation. Then stay tuned as the best political team anywhere breaks it all down. Watch the only network with respect for all Americans. It's debate night with Chris Cuomo, Tuesday. I love running and working out, but my heel pain was devastating. So I go to fix my feet today, and in about 30 minutes, I walked out pain-free and could not believe it. Our inserts are custom-made for your feet, and you get to try them before you buy them. Visit Fix My Feet today and live pain-free. Located in Okemos and now in Lansing. Foot pain relief is on its way at Fix My Feet today. Gambling ads are getting pretty hard to ignore. Bad now. If you choose to gamble, make sure you play it safe. For tips that will help, go to don'tregretthebet.org. A message from the Michigan Gaming Control Board. End of year is coming with insurance deductibles resetting in January. Now is the perfect time to schedule an appointment with Advanced Audiology. Let us provide you with a customized hearing solution today. Hearing starts here at Advanced Audiology. Dad! It's really uneven. I'm worried somebody's going to trip on it. Or worse. Done in a day with a permanent solution for your concrete. Ayers does it differently. They're done. Welcome back. Puama Westphalia is back at home tonight, and after winning 8-7 over North Muskegon last week, the Pirates rolled to a 42-6 win over Bath tonight. As for PW's rival Fowler, John Spicer's <laughs> squad picked up a 53-15 win over Saranac. Yeah, and staying in the CMAC, Dansville made the trip to Potterville as the Vikings had their home opener tonight, and we're getting right to the good stuff. Opening kickoff, senior Ezzy Taylor fields it, and it has his eyes set on the end zone, quickly putting the Vikings up 6-0. And tonight was just the Ezzy Taylor. Taylor show for Potterville as the senior QB is now going to decide to keep the ball and run it into the end zone. His favorite place on a football field, by the way, because who wouldn't love the end zone? Duh. And it wasn't just the offense that saw Taylor doing some damage. Dansville was on offense and Taylor turns the into a ball hawk coming up with the interception. But when the Aggies got the ball back on offense, quarterback Mason Burgett decides to show off his wheels, slicing and dicing his way for a Dansville touchdown. However, Potterville hangs on to win this one 36 to 21 over Dansville. Over in East Jackson, the Trojans hosting Vandercook Lake tied at 14 late in the first quarter until Jayhawk quarterback Christopher Jimenez says I'll take this one myself scampering home on the QB keeper to give them the lead. Trojans looking for an answer. Amari Paget keeps it around the right side, gets a block and gets upfield for a big gain and a Trojan first down. But later in the drive, Paget drops back to pass and his pass skips off a helmet at the line of scrimmage and is picked off by Jimenez, who's got a big return the other way. Vandercook Lake, defe Lake defeats East Jackson 43-28. Did the home crowd have something to cheer about and more? Midway through the second, Leslie, 10 point lead. Joel Cranmore connects with a wide open Braden Johnson. He'll juke out a few people before getting in for six. And Leslie wasn't just getting done on offense either. You'll see him here in a minute. Tanner Kraft was a sack machine tonight. This monster takedown on third and 15 forces Homer to punt. Then, with less than two minutes until the half, Cranmore uses his arm. Leslie wins 55 to six, the final. Ooh, got